Okay, today we're going to talk about grinding the crack, which is without a doubt the most popular video on my on my YouTube page. Um, it's gotten over 31 million views on my page, and I know that other people have downloaded it and uploaded it to their pages. Some of them have 5 million views, some of them have 10 million views, so it's gone incredibly viral. I'm going to go ahead and show that video and then tell you guys a little bit about the history, where the place is, what we were doing there, what we were filming for, and how that video ended up getting uploaded to my YouTube page. That obviously wasn't the original intent of the footage or what I was doing there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just start playing it, but before I do, I wanna let you know that I've had to change the music. The music was from AWOL Nation, it was Sale. Unfortunately, I don't have the rights to use it, so I had to use another song. So I already know all of you are gonna type, you know, all oh, the original song is so much better. I, I completely agree with you, but there's nothing I can do about it. This is the music I have to use. So I put this music in temporarily, just so that I'm able to talk about it, and you guys can see it, um, and I can tell you a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start playing the video, and I'm gonna start telling you a little bit about the history. Let's begin. So, <clears throat> this, this cliff is located in Wallenstad, which is about an hour and a half north of Zurich. The cliff is just over 5,000 feet tall, which means it's about a mile high. When we jump it, we are capable of flying about two to three miles away from the cliff, and there the farmers in the region have given us a little area that we can land in. We kind of have a, a deal with them where we pay them, you know, in this little box per jump, so it's like five, I think Swiss francs per jump is what they asked for, which I think is quite reasonable. Anyway, so we went to this region to film for a TV show on ABC called Superhumans. It was, it was for news program 2020. They, they had hired me to go there, jump, capture footage, and they were going to make this program out of it. That's pretty much what we were doing there. At the time, I was really training precision flying. Like I wanted to set up targets and hit targets. So my, I had two local friends who lived in the area, Christian and Andy, who would help me out with logistics and moving things around. And they were the ones who actually went into the position and held the balloons. The guy holding the balloon is right here. That's Christian. <laughs> so Christian is my buddy who's actually standing there holding balloons. And he actually stood in this position 13 different times. He only jumped out of the way twice. But, you know, it, 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 I think one of the reasons why this video became so popular and people really got, got connected to it and why it went so viral is partially because of the music, but also because I think a lot of people see him standing there and imagine themselves standing there and think, you know, hey, would I be capable of, you know, standing my ground and not jumping out of the way? Obviously, we found <laughs> after I hit Table Mountain that he made the absolute right decision. I mean, I, I, you should never trust me flying at you at 120 miles an hour. So he made the absolute right decision jumping out of the way. <laughs> There's no question that that was something that you don't want to do. That was, at the time we were kind of figuring stuff out, but now we realize that you know, having a person stand there like that is incredibly life-threatening, not just for the wingsuit pilot, but for the person who's holding the balloons. So honestly, I think that he had an enormous amount of courage and trust to stand there in the first place. And when he jumped out of the way, I think that was definitely the right move. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because I didn't intend to, to put this footage online. I had done the jump for the show, Superhumans, and I had no intention of really looking at it again. I mean, a lot of people had jumped this place before, a lot of people had gotten footage, a lot of people had posted footage. Um, I had even jumped it before and posted footage. So I really did it for the show, and then I never really looked at the footage again. I didn't really, you know, think much of it. A little bit later, a couple months later, um, Andy and Christian call me, and they say, hey, you know, we have a friend, and he gave you a ride up to the top one of the times. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And they're all, he would like to use some of the footage and make a little edit. And I'm like, yeah, that's totally cool. You know, go ahead. As long as he doesn't sell it, he can make as many edits as he wants. And they're like, okay. And then uh, another month or two goes by. I get an email from their friend who had given me the ride. And he says, Jeb, I've made a little edit and I would really like you to take a look at it. And I was like, okay, you know, no problem. So he emailed it to me, a link, and I watched it. And I was like, wow, this is actually 
kind of cool. I like this. You know, do you mind if I upload it to YouTube? And his response was, yeah, sure. You know, go ahead. You know, if, if you want to upload it, you, I'd be happy for you to upload it. Just, I hope, you know, AWOL Nation doesn't sue us. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, AWOL Nation is not going to sue us. I mean, the way it kind of works is if you use music, like copyrighted music, and you put it to a video and you upload it, then what happens is the artist whose music that is then monetizes your video. So it, it eliminates your ability to monetize your own work. So then it just becomes a thing where you just post it for people to see and it's kind of free. Like I, I, I uploaded it without any, I made zero dollars off of that footage. It was just a matter of uploading it so people could see it and enjoy it. And the artists who actually make the music are the ones who monetize it. So that's what happens when you use music that you don't have rights to. The artists who make the music actually end up monetizing and making money from whoever clicks on it. Which, you know, Fair enough, more power to them. I mean, they, the music was beautiful. And I, I do believe that the music had a big part of why that video became so viral and, and so many people watched it. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are on my page because you saw that video. Like that was the video that most people know me from. And I just wanna thank all of you for spending time on my page and watching the content that I'm creating. You know, I. I I'm hoping that this page will grow and I'm gonna start doing more stuff. Recently, I've been kind of just mellow and relaxing and just hanging out, but in the next couple of months, I'm gonna start doing a lot more. And we're gonna start jumping again, we're gonna start diving with big sharks again. Everything's gonna start gearing up over the next couple of months. And the vlogs are gonna start getting a little more interesting, a little more exciting, and a little more unique. <laughs> um, right now, I'm just kind of going through old stories and history, but very soon, it's gonna start becoming more dynamic and more modern and more what we're doing now. And I'll pepper in throughout the, you know, throughout the time, little things of what we're doing and old footage and old stories, but I wanna try to keep it, you know, as time goes by, it's gonna be more and more modern, more and more what's going on right now, more and more what's happening. And yeah, I hope you all enjoy coming along for the ride because I'm gonna have fun taking you there. Anyways, thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Slippery. <laughs> wow, it's really slippery. Well, I came extremely close on that one. <laughs> yes, I did.